What is a good day to brew, baby? What is up, YouTube? It's your boy Millsy back with Hometown Commander back from another episode of Millsy Brews. Today, today we're gonna take a look at Marnius Calgar. But before I get into it, I just want to make a really quick announcement. Um, going forward, Millsy Brews is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna have two videos releasing every time you get a Millsy Brews. We're gonna have this episode where I'm gonna brew the uh, the deck live for you right here together. Uh, you're going to follow me along in my process of brewing the deck. And then, um, at the same time, I'm going to be releasing a, uh, a deck tech. So you guys can, if you just want the deck, if you don't want it, the process of me going through it and building it all, uh, that link to the deck tech is going to be down in the description. Go ahead and hit that. It's going to take you right over the deck tech and you can see everything from the deck boiled down for you, put into a better, uh, short form and strategy, uh, other than me sitting here and going through building the entire deck. But if the experience you want is me showing how I would build the deck and how that process would go, then this is the exact video that you want to be clicked on. Go ahead and like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments, what do you think of my build? Do you like it? Do you not like it? What cards would you recommend? Uh, someone just did that on a previous video, and I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I like it when you guys, when someone tells me what they think should be there and should not, we get to have that conversation about why. But that's okay, uh, and at the end of the day, we're all different players. We all play different ways, and that's what makes the game fun. But anyway, Marnie's Calgar. Let's talk about this card and why I think this is the best commander from uh, the Imperium deck and why I want to build around it. It's 5 mana, 3, 5, double strike. So 3, 5, double strike. Whenever one or more tokens enter the battle affinity control, draw a card. This is the part of the card we're going to spend most of the deck caring about. Whenever one or more tokens... Enter the battlefield under our control. Draw a card. One or more may if we create three tokens at once. We only draw one card. But for every individual trigger that creates a token, we're going to draw a card. That's going to be important. Six mana. Create two, two, two. Astartes warrior creature tokens with vigilance. Okay. So just like the um, Tyranid deck, I do want to go a little bit through the precon because I actually think we're going to use more from this precon than we did for the Abaddon precon. Uh, the deck is kind of interesting and it has a lot of interesting things in it. I think we're going to end up putting in a lot of our own things. Uh, but I do really quick want to go through the precon, talk about what I think we can add, um, and then we'll go through and add our own things. You know, since we're going to go really tokens, I think the plan for our deck this time, I want to be clear on these episodes about telling you what my goal is tokens go wide tokens we're going to go wide with the tokens and we're going to use lots of enchantments to beef our tokens up get them really big give them vigilance a uh, bunch of different abilities and then swing through for the win that's that's the plan that's what we're going to try to do i think that's the best way to build calgar now the one thing i want to avoid is making the deck need Calgar to win. What we would like to do is put enough token support in this deck so that if, if Calgar gets to be 9 or 11 mana and we cannot cast him anymore, we can still win the game. So that's the goal. The, the deck's going to kind of work slightly independently, but with Calgar out, we're just going to get all of the value. So uh, let's go through the deck. Um, I had a chance to play this one. Um, on an upcoming video that will be coming out. You guys will see more about that soon. And I had a ton of fun playing this pre-con. Uh, and I got to see some cards I think will work really well, but a lot that I didn't think. So, uh, the flesh is weak. It says it enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature. Creatures with plus one, plus one counters on them are artifacts in addition to their other types. Non-artifact creatures get minus one, minus one. I think this is a card to consider. Um, if we're going to go that route... Uh, like, I think this pairs really well with the card from the Necron uh, precon in uh, its Biotransference, which makes all of our creatures artifacts. Uh, and we can play around with some things that way. So I think the uh, Biotransference, um, the Biotransference Flesh is Weak is something we can look into. I'm not saying it's going to go in there for sure, but I think it's something we can look into. Birth of the Imperium to an Esper for create a 2-2 create two, two white token for each with Vigilance for each opponent we have, which is hopefully going to be 3. On the 2, each opponent sacks a creature, and on the 3, draw a card for each opponent who, who controls fewer creatures than you. This could work well. I think this could work to our strategy, so we're going to do that. 
I have some ideas for sub strategies we'll get into in a second, but I think that'll work for well. Okay, reconnaissance mission. Whenever creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card. Um, there's some other effects like reconnaissance mission that we can try to use as well, but I think it works really well. And then defenders of humanity, X2 white. When it comes in, we make X2 two tokens. X2 and a white, we can exile it and create that many tokens. Uh, we can do it only if I can, we control no creatures and if it's during our turn. Um, I like that it's on an enchantment body, but I also feel like we might be able to find better than it, but I'm going to do it for now. Okay, we're going to go through the artifacts. I don't love a lot of the artifacts. Like, I, I want to try the Golden Thrones because we can sack a creature and get some mana, which I think is going to be really good. Uh, the Talismans are going to come in a lot of handy for this deck. Every creature attacks, make a 2-2 two -two with Vigilance that's attacking. Then attacking creatures gain menace until end of turn. That's something that I think could be really beneficial, especially if we're going to go wide. Uh, Arcane Signet, of course. Soaring, of course. Skull Clamp, of course, can help us draw. And uh, probably not the Chalice. All right, so let's go into the spells. Hour of Reckoning is an interesting board wipe. I do love the ideal of Exterminatus, but I think we have cheaper board wipes that we can play that are going to be more beneficial. I think we want our board wipes to come down uh, as efficiently as possible. Fell the Mighty. We're going to replace a lot of this removal with better removal. I think Deny the Witch is interesting, but we have better counter spells. Uh, Mortify, Collective Effort. Seems interesting because we can buff our entire board. I like Marshall Coup. Marshall Coup is exactly what we want to see. It's a board wipe that can also get us uh, tokens. Plowshares is about the right way. And Launch the Fleet seems interesting because we can get some extra tokens that way. So let's add our cards here. Uh, I'm going to keep the Bio Transference and uh, the Flesh is Weak in here for now. And the reason is, is we can use a combo the card called time sieve um i apologize to anyone who doesn't want who doesn't like taking extra turns in magic um i think time sieve is one of the ways we can really easily get our push our advantage through to to take extra combats or take extra turns and win the game so sacrifice five artifact artifacts take an extra turn after this one this is normally paired with a card called thopter assembly Uh, Thopter Assembly says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control no Thopters other than it, return it back to your hand and create five one one Thopter creature tokens. These pair together to give us uh, infinite turns, basically, as long as we have six mana to put down the Thopter Assembly. So I like this. This is going to give us, if our goal is to go wide, um, this is going to help us. This will make all of our creatures artifacts, which pairs with time. See, Flesh is Weak will make all of our creatures, when it comes down, uh, uh, artifacts as well which will work with time sieve we can also find other ways to put plus and plus encounters on our tokens with uh, Cathar's Crusade and things like that we'll get into that in a second so this is the first place I want to go with that um, and we'll, we'll add these other cards in here so I run a deck with Alayla as the commander Alayla is a uh, she's a commander from Throne of Eldraine that cares about making tokens when you play artifacts or enchantments. I think she fits the bill of a perfect sub commander for this deck because it's exactly what we're trying to do is play all of these. Uh, we're trying to play all of these token producers. And there's a lot of really great token producers in, uh, in these colors. Um, in fact, some of my favorite token producers in these colors um, are, are actually enchantments. And so that's why I think we want to try to consider going that route. A, because enchantments are a little bit harder to take off the board than other things. Um, they traditionally tend to be harder to take off the board than, than creatures. You know, if all of our token production is on creatures, well, then it's going to be a little bit easier to remove because there's a lot of easy removal for creatures, whereas not every color actually has great uh, great removal for enchantments or artifacts. So that's why I kind of think that um, getting some of our token producers in uh, 
on enchantments or on artifacts or on uh, things that are not uh, things that are not creatures are going to end up leading to a better a better end game. I also really like cards like Marshall Coup that uh, that create tokens on spells. Yes, spells have the chance to get countered, and we have to be a little bit aware of that. But I think we can easily. Uh, I think we can easily find the right ones like Marshall Coup or White Sun Zenith or uh, Entreat the Angels that uh, are going to make us a ton of tokens and help us push this uh, this Go White strategy. So I'll, I'll add Entreat there and then we'll add White Suns. Uh, Zenith and then I think we also want to add um, what's it? Finale of Glory? The one that makes uh, two two soldiers. I like the idea of having some token production on spells because it'll also help us if we have a ton of extra mana. So um, let's quickly go through the rest of the deck and then I'll start kind of building what I want the basis of the deck to be. With our enchantments that create tokens and then our enchantments that buff our creatures. And then we'll go over the EA track and we'll finish the list on out with some, uh, you know, f uh, filler cards, that kind of thing. Okay, so we're just going to go quickly through all these cards, and what we're doing is we're looking for creatures that I think are going to help us fit this uh, this kind of go-wide token strategy. Uh, a lot of this precon is built around uh, is built around our commander for the deck, Grayfax, uh, from the precon. But I think we can find some really cool cards. The, the the ones that I'm interested in are... I'm kind of interested in Ultramarine's Honor Guard. But I, I'd look at the Suppressor and the Devastator as well. These guys that have squads so we can pay more mana to have them come in as a copy of anything. This one has Battle Cry, which gives all the rest of our creatures plus one plus zero, which could be interesting. It's just a little slow and we can get that ability elsewhere. Eisenhorn seems interesting for sure. Letting us get those tokens. I like Company Commander because it's going to give all our attacking creatures death touch, which is going to make things a lot harder. Basarius Call seems interesting. Can get us tokens, but again, I think there's better ways to get tokens. The big problem here, and this is great because this is going to be one of our win cons, attacking with it and making our opponents lose life, but there's also other ways that we can do that. Okay. And then Gray Effects seems like it'd be interesting to consider as well. So let's let's go through these creatures here. I like Ultramarine's Honor Guard, and the reason is the more mana we dump into it, the more creatures get the buff, right? With, with just Ultramarine's Honor Guard down, that's just four mana for a 1-1 one, one buff, which I know it seems kind of dumb. Millsy, there's plenty of other enchantments for less than that that can uh, that can net us a, pl a plus one plus one buff, and uh, sure, you're you're correct. Um, but what I think is interesting about Ultramarine Guards is a that it's on flavor, and b it's just a good card. Uh, Vanguard Suppressor, I don't see the same benefit in now that I look at it. I think we have better ways to do things. Devastator, its squad would come in and take out artifacts and shamans. We have our own other removal that can do that. So Eisenhorn, you may reveal the first card you draw each turn as you draw it. Whenever you reveal an instant or sorcery, create a daemon, and then whenever it deals combat damage to a player, investigate that many times, which create clue tokens, which are artifacts that we could sacrifice to time sieve. Okay, uh, I'm not fully convinced on Inquisitor... Uh, Eisenhorn. Uh, but I think I'm willing to consider it. I don't know that I'm convinced on it yet, but we can come back and forth. Company Commander is for sure. Uh, the Commissar is a for sure. Uh, because that that trigger, whenever it attacks, each opponent loses X life and you... And you where X is the number of attacking creatures, um, that's that's before blocks. That's a trigger that's on the stack. So I, I like that, and I and I, I like Grayfax. I think Grayfax is a 
interesting card. It's going to help us tap down important things if that's something we want to do. Okay. All right, so we, we kind of have our snapshot here. We have the idea. We want to go, go wide tokens, and there's plenty of ways to do it. So let, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite token producers on enchantments, and then we will talk about the best ways to buff our field. The first of one of my favorite go wide token enchant enchantments is Luminarch Ascension. For one and a white, we get an enchantment that says the beginning of each opponent's end step. If we didn't lose life, we put a quest counter on Luminarch Ascension. And then for two mana, we can create an angel token, and we can activate it only if it has four or more counters on it. Now, activating it doesn't remove tokens, but as soon as we get to four on Luminarch Ascension for two mana, we can pump out four, four white angel tokens. The good part about Calgar is each one of these activations is a separate trigger, which means we're making an angel and drawing. And that's fantastic. We're not, we're not going to beat that. Um... Next, I like a card like Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom says at the start of our upkeep, we lose a life and create a 1-1 one, one Fairy Road creature token with flying. Well, the great part here is with Calgar out, this is now going to net us a card. So this basically becomes Frexian Arena with... Um, Frexian Arena is a three-man enchantment. It says lose a life and draw a card. Well, this basically becomes um, Frexian Arena with Calgar out. Now, the thing I would like to do, if possible, with this deck is stick to flying creatures with tokens. And the reason is, is I think the bonus of us then be flying is going to help us in the air. But I think the one exception I want to try is a uh, wedding announcement. A card that makes you a 1-1 one, one human if you didn't attack with two more creatures. But if you did, you draw a card and then it transforms to just give your uh, creatures a flat 1-1 one, one buff. I think this is going to be uh, really good. It's going to allow us to get some uh, good stuff. Next is Thopter Spy Network at the beginning of your upkeep. If you control an artifact, we get a Thopter. And whenever one or more artifact creatures you control do a combat to a player, draw a card. Well, this is going to pair really well with the Flesh is Weak and uh, about Transference in that kind of mini artifact. Uh, but that also, if we go this route, it opens us up to making artifact tokens as well. So of that uh, artifact creature tokens as well. So that's something we can uh, consider as well. Now I'll move slightly into the uh, cards that can buff our creatures. We have Paladin class. On uh, step one, it just protects us during our turn on from spells. But once we put it up three mana, all our creatures get plus one, plus one. Uh, we have something like Glorious Anthem. For three mana, all of our creatures get plus one, plus one. Uh, you have like on the top end, you'd have something like true conviction, which says uh, for six mana, all of our creatures have double strike and lifelink, which could be really good once we build up a wide board state. Um, if we want to go the, if we want to go the flying route, I really like cards like favorable winds where it says each creature control with flying at plus one plus one. We have intangible virtue. Creature tokens you control get plus one, plus one, and have vigilance. So as you can see, we're building up this. This is why I really like a Layla in this list, is because you're kind of building up this stack of enchantments that all do really good things. And also, we need these artifacts for mana, right? So this kind of works perfectly into what a Layla is trying to do. I think we can probably also, we might be even to able to sneak Zur in here. Uh, uh. Uh, the new one, uh, the new Zer from Dominaria. We might be even be able to sneak in here and make some of these enchantments into tokens, but we'll uh, we'll get to there in a second. Okay, so we've 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 given some token producers. We've given some buffers. Uh, let's do a little bit into uh, card draw. Let's do a little bit into artifacts. Like I think the one thing we can add in here is we added the talismans. I think we definitely want uh, Zori Signet, Demir Signet, and Orzov Signet, and we can we can talk about if any of them uh, need to come out. But I think we add them all in here for now. Really buff up our our mana. Um, when we if we're gonna play tokens, uh, I really like something like Frexian Altar. 
just because it allows us to sacrifice our tokens for mana if we need to continue to push our strategy forward. If we're getting these cheap tokens, we can go ahead and sacrifice them to Phyrexian Altar to get a bunch of mana. Um, I wouldn't mind running something like Bash in Remembrance uh, to... Uh, so when our tokens die, they ping our da our opponents for damage and we gain a life on each of them. That's just going to help with uh, the mid-game where we're um, kind of trying to figure out our combat. I think Smothering Tithe is really important here. It makes us treasure tokens that we're going to draw off each treasure token if Calgar's out. Uh, Rhystic Study, you could say what you want about Rhystic Study, but it does a very good job at drawing cards, and I think it'll help us a ton. We have to remember that we're not in green. Which means we need to draw cards to ramp. Um, we don't have any ramp. We're going to have to draw cards to ramp. So we want to add some other card draws. Uh, Brainstorm. If you want to look into something like Ponder. Um, I like the idea of Preordain. Uh, we could look at like Faithless Mending. Or Faithless, not Faithless Looting. Faith, is it Faithful Mending? Faithful Mending, uh, you know, d uh, gain two life, draw two, and then pitch two, and we can flash it back. Um, these are the kind of draw spells that uh, are just going to push us forward. All right, let's talk about removal really quick. We, we picked the Swords to Plowshares from the deck. Let's follow that up with a Path to Exile. Um, we're in black, so we get to play Deadly Rollick uh, from the 2020 Commander decks. That is our removal spell that exiles targets creature for free as long as we are playing our commander. Uh, just like I said on the Myra deck, uh, I like Fierce Guardianship. It's a free counter spell if we have Marnius Calgar out, and it can also protect uh, him as well. We're also going to play Flawless Maneuver uh, to protect our creatures from a potential board wipe. They all get indestructible in a turn. Won't protect us from something like a Cyclonic Rift, but it will protect us from any board wipes that might come across. And hopefully, as we're drawing, we're drawing into these pieces that are going to help us along the way. Okay, more removals. So we're in black-white, so we get to play things like Anguished Unmaking. One of the best uh, general removal spells, just exile target non-land permanent, and you, gain, and you lose three life. So we can literally nuke anything on the board, and we just take three life for the, for the uh, privilege. I'm kind of thinking of... You know, you have uh, you have a lot of removal in black-white that can be really good. Uh, a lot of people like, uh, not Mortify, D-Spark. D-Spark hits anything with CMC4 or greater, which is going to be most of the time people's companion, you know, commanders, things like that. That's just two mana. I'd like to consider something like Vanishing Births. You just exile target monocolored permanent, but the question is going to be how often is a monocolored permanent that important? That's something we can kind of consider on the back end. We have things like Void Rend, which can hit any non land permanent, which is really effective because we don't know exactly what we're going to be coming up against. I wouldn't mind a Drown in the Lock. This is an instant from Th uh, Throne of Eldraine originally. Counter target spell with mana value less than the number of cards in Controller's Graveyard. Or destroy target creature with mana value less or equal to the number of cards in a Controller's Graveyard. It's a it's a piece of removal to consider for sure um, as it kind of fits our strategy uh, in that sense. I'm trying to think of some other... We have, we have Fateful Absence, which just goes ahead and destroys a creature and they investigate... Um, I like Reality Shift. This is a instant in blue that lets us exile a creature, and uh, they manifest. So that's going to help take off uh, some things. All right. F as far as board wipes go, I think my favorites are Farewell, because Farewell literally just nukes an entire board. You can get rid of anything you need to. Uh, the cool part here is that. We could exile all creatures and keep our enchantments and artifacts. Uh, now, if any of our artifacts are creatures, they would exile. But we could go ahead and get rid of all that. Or we can get rid of anything. And then I really like uh, Vanquish the Horde. This is kind of our Blasphemous Act in white. Just going to take care of the entire board and everything on it. 
we could consider toxic deluge as well, depending on how much life we end up gaining. Uh, deluge is also cool because it uh, gets rid of it's minus X minus X instead of damage. But I kind of like Meat Hook instead, and the reason is is the bottom abilities. Whenever a creature we control dies, each opponent loses a life, and whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, we gain a life. Cool part about Meat Hook is we've if we have a giant board of four fours, let's say we can pay four to Meat Hook, kill all of our own creatures, and deal a ton of damage to our opponents, kind of like this Bash Remembrance. So I kind of like the effect that we're an Esper because we can kind of play just a teeny bit into that aristocrat style, but not not so much so that we lose the benefit of the other colors that we have. Cool. Okay, I really like our I really like our artifact setup. I really like our enchantment setup. I really like some of the removals and the sorceries we have. I'm gonna add a card that I really love and I think more people should consider. Um, called Notorious Throng. This is a spell. Got a reprint in the Zendikar Rising deck, Anawan deck, and that's how I learned of it the first time. Travel Sorcery Rogue. You can either pay three and a blue for it or for its prowl cost. So if you dealt combat damage to a player this turn with a rogue, you can pay five and a blue. I just realized we may not. Oh, we have, uh, we have Bitter Blossom making the rogue tokens so i guess that becomes a little bit more uh niche than i thought it was going to be that's on me i didn't realize it said rogues on it so so maybe that's not going to work out as well as i thought it would um i like like an all runs epiphany it's going to make us a couple flying tokens and let us take an extra turn okay yeah i think we're up, i think we're going up the right way here we can kind of uh i know that this this eda truck page is going to remind me of some uh, some enchantments I'm not thinking of, but that's okay. Uh, I expect that to happen, and that's why I recommend that you still, even if you think you know what your deck wants to do and how it's going to do it, go check out EDA Trek. It's just gonna end up. It's gonna end up encouraging you to look at cards you never would have thought of in the first place, and I think that's the important part of a resource like uh, EDA Trek. Not necessarily for you just to. Uh, copy and paste uh, deck list and unless that's what you want to do then you're more than welcome to do that uh, but I think EDA Trek is best because it allows you to um, wow words it allows you to take a look at cards you may not have ever seen before and uh, and kind of influence your deck building ability in the future by having cards that you know um in your knowledge pool. So right now I'm just going through and adding the lands that I'm probably going to play regardless. Uh, Command Tower. Uh, Rafine's Tower is our Tri-Land that has Tri-Types so we can get it with any of our three fetch lands, Flooded Strand, Marsh Flats, or Polluted Delta. We added our three Shock Lands, Godless Shrine, Hollowed Fountain, and Watery Grave. Uh, next up, I really like the... Uh, lands from Innistrad that come in the Battlefield Tap unless you control two other lands. So that's Shipwreck Marsh. That's Deserted Beach. And then White Black is Shattered Sanctum. Okay. Uh, and those are going to come in there, so that'll help us with that. Um, in my Esper decks, uh, I think in this deck, we can definitely run... Something like Spire of Industry, which can tap for any mana as long as we control an artifact, but we pay a life for it. Um, I definitely like like City of Brass. It's just going to come down and get us any color we need for a damage. Um, in Alayla, uh, I run the three artifact single color lands and Inventor's Fair. And I think it'll end up helping us out here. So let's do it. Inventor's Fair is a land that says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain a life. Four and sack it. Search your library for an artifact card reveal. Put it into your hand and shuffle. Activate them if you control three or more artifacts. Um, this can go get us time sieve. This could go get us fraction altar if we needed the mana. This can go get us a lot of things. And I think more often than not, we're going to have three enchantment, three artifacts. But what we can do is add our... Three 
artifact lands. Uh, we have Vault of Whispers. We have Seat of the Synod. And I'm trying to remember the name of the white one. Great Furnace is red. Oh. I know I'm going to know it, Ancient Den. That's what it is. I knew I was going to know it as soon as I saw it, Ancient Den. So these are all single target, single color lands that are just artifacts. So they're going to help us with that artifact account. Uh, we could c consider those tap lands from MH2, but uh, I don't think I, I don't think I will. Okay, what else do I want to play? Uh, I like the check land cycle. I think more often than not. They, um, they're really good. Uh, we'll play Drown Catacomb. We'll play Isolated Chapel. And the reason that I really like the Checklands, Isolated Chapel, Drown Catacomb, and then Blue White is Glacial Fortress. The reason I like them is most of the time, if we have a fetch land in our opening hand, uh, we're going for Rafine's Tower, our try land first. So we're always going to have that in play to then allow our check lands to come into play uh, untapped. Uh, in non-green decks, I really like the filter lands. Uh, these are a set of lands that either tap for colorless, or you can put one of their two colors into them and get any combination of two colors. So Mystigate is blue and white, uh, Sunken Ruins is uh, blue and black and then I believe it's fetid heath is black and white I like this because if you only have a white or you only have a black you can then get any combination of the two which is just going to help you uh, get, get what you need and so that becomes really helpful that's at 23 I'm sure we'll find a couple extra lands uh, when we go into EDA trick so we're at 86, which I feel like is a good number for now. I'm sure there's a few more sorceries or creatures I forgot about that we really want to use. Um, maybe something like something like Adeline could be cool. Uh, maybe something like Dorothea, which when it flips over, we put it on a creature. It gives us a 4-4 spirit every time we attack. Uh, that could be cool. And again, we'll go through these creatures more in a second. But okay, really quick, I want to go. I want to go through the Necron deck really quick because I know some of their things do a good job at creating artifact tokens. And since we're kind of pushing towards that a little bit, let's just take a really quick browse through and see if we find anything that makes tokens efficiently enough to be worth uh, trying to include. I know a couple of them make. Whenever one or more artifact create cards leave your graveyard, create token at the beginning of combat, another target artifact creature gets plus two plus two menace. Okay. There's one that just taps untapped artifacts to give our lose our opponent's life. Yeah, I wasn't seeing as much as I'd hoped. What's War in Heaven do? Okay, let's go through these quick. Cage Sun seems interesting, but since we're in... Half interested in Resurrection Orb, but... Yeah, I actually don't mind, like, Cranial Plating or Nettle Cyst either. That's something that we can... Uh, Nettle cyst mainly because it comes down and gives us a creature to attach it to. Uh, but I like the idea of that as well. Anyway, so the two cards I was thinking of uh, before we before we finish out on going to the A-Track, uh, we have Reconnaissance. Basically, this is an, it's, it's an old card that's worded a really odd way. But basically, for zero mana, we can remove an attacking creature from combat and untap it. So basically, in the last step of combat, right after damage is done... There's technically time where we can use Reconnaissance to untap all of our creatures, effectively giving them Vigilance. 
So Reconnaissance is just a really interesting card uh, for that. But the one that I also want to look at is Throne of the God Pharaoh. It says, the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tap creatures you control. Uh, if we don't have a Vigilance Enabler out, uh, Throne of the God Pharaoh is just going to deal a ton of damage to our opponents, which I think is really, 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 really beneficial because uh, we full swing, which is which is going to be a lot, right? Uh, Throne of the God Pharaoh is just going to basically hurt our opponents in the turn. And then I kind of want to, if we're going to go wide, we're going to play the go wide game. I think I like Dolmen Gate. Prevent all combat damage should be dealt to attacking creatures you control. This is going to allow us to get in with all of our little guys. Not have to worry about uh, any of our big uh, blocking opponents. But the cool part is if we pair it with something like this, which gives all of our... Oh, sorry, Company Commander. Uh, gives all of our creatures Death Touch. Uh, well, great. <laughs> it's just going to keep our creatures alive and kill our opponent's creatures. So, I like this little setup we got going on. Lots of artifacts. Lots of tokens. Uh, I think this is a good place to start. Let's head on over to Yatrek. Let's see what Yatrek has for us that we didn't have. And then let's have some fun. And I already see a card that uh, probably, just like Smothering Tide, this is an auto-include, and that's Black Market Connections. Um, Black Market Connection, Connections is an interesting card because it allows us to pay life to get benefit. Uh, we have to do one which most of the time is create the treasure token and lose a life, which with Calgar would get, would draw us card. Uh, but if you want to go up, you can draw a card and lose two life or create a change lane and create three life. This will almost always give us the treasure token for a life, but with Calgar, that's always going to draw us a card. Uh, yep, I knew I would forget these this style of card, and that's okay. Uh, I was more focused on my payoffs, but we have Anointed Procession, which is going to double the amount of of tokens under our control. So Smothering Tithe and Black Market Connections would make us two treasures instead of one. Any of our token uh, creators would make us more than one. But I think we're also going to play Divine Visitation, which says that instead, instead of making creature tokens, we're going to make four, four white angels instead, which is just going to end up being really good. Now, I'm very interested in tossing Sigil of the Empty Throne uh, into this deck. It says whenever we cast an enchantment, we get a 4-4 four, four angel. We're playing a lot of enchantments, and we probably will end up with a lot of enchantments because we want to keep our um, value consistent over the course of the game. So I think I think that one's kind of being good. And the other one, just... A, I feel like this card is just one of my favorite cards of all time, and I and I want to um, literally slam this <laughs> slam this in any deck that can hold it. And that's Hollowed Haunting. It says as long as you control seven or more enchantments, creatures you control have flying vigilance. Whenever you cast an enchantment, we get an XX a, a star star spirit, where stars the number of spirits we control. Uh, I like Hollowed Haunting, and if we're gonna play this many enchantments, uh, I think it it'll end up being good for us. I prefer token strategies in Esper that play a lot of enchantments because, again, enchantments are very tough to, to take care of and they compound on each other over and over and over. Um, once we get Anointed Procession down, literally everything we else do, we do becomes money. Uh, and for that reason, we want to make sure we play uh, things like an Enlightened Tutor and a Dillic Tutor. Uh, because we really care about our enchantments. The other good thing about Enlightened Tutor is it will go get us things like Time Sieve or any of these other enchantments if we really need them. So, like it, like it. I like it so far. Looks like us and EDH are on the same page. Okay, Grim Hireling seems interesting to get us tokens for dealing combat damage. Uh, but I think I'm good for the moment. Uh, and the reason is, I think I need to focus on ending the game. I think we've put a lot of focus into how we can go wide. Uh, and I think I'm good. Nadir Kraken seems really interesting. We'll set that aside for now. Okay, let's go down into the top cards. Astronaut's Altar, same thing. Going to sack our creatures for mana. 
Psychrate Forensic Study Esper Sentinel uh, draws us cards for our opponents. That's a really good idea because it just draws us cards. A Light and Tutor. You can avoid Thassa's Oracle. Not, not because it's, uh, it's not a good card. I just don't like Thassa's Oracle and I choose not to play it. Okay, let's get down into our creatures. Um, I was trying to keep my... I was trying not to jump too much into uh, Aristocrats, but I think Pitiless Plunderer is something that will end up kind of being something that's worth playing. So we're going to keep this in the back of our mind. Monastery Mentor is probably a win-win for everything. Whenever we cast any non-creature spell, we get a 1-1 Monk with Prowess. That's just going to build our board even wider. We see Adeline in there. Same thing for each opponent. Whenever we attack, it doesn't matter who we attack, doesn't matter what we attack with. We're always going to get that 1-1 one, one attacking everyone. And that'll only draw us one from um, Calgar because they all get uh, created at the same time. Uh, but that's okay. I still think that's a net benefit. We see a lot of these new white cards that are in going to get us card draw. But I, I don't think we need it. I think we've got plenty of other ways to do it. I like the idea of Zillaport, but I'd rather play the Bastion Remembrance again and, or the Meat Hook. They're easier to get rid of. They're harder to get rid of, and they're going to stick around longer. Ledger Shredder seems pretty cool for the card draw. Pardon me. I think Elishnorn is the top end of this deck if you want to go that route, but I kind of like the fun of building the battlefield up, uh, going really wide, dealing, having your opponents try to deal with a, 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 an ever-increasing board. And so we're going to try to focus on that instead of some of these other ones. Okay, coming down into spells. Um, Mystical Tutor does not seem like a bad idea, but I think we're going to have plenty of card draw. I don't think we're going to need it. Uh, Vampiric Tutor is a yes. Dark Ritual doesn't seem like a bad idea, but we can come back to it. We see the path there. So we see the Void Run, so we're up the same alley as some of these people. Uh, we see Silence. Utter End. I'd consider Mortify. I'd also consider... Uh, you know, Doom Blade or, or something like that as well. I just, uh, if I was going to play more, if I was going to play Doom Blade, I would play Pong of Fire Rapid Hybridization just because they're cheaper. But Mortify is cool because it hits enchantments as well. Utter End's also helpful because it's exile anything, but it's four mana. And that's a lot of mana just to get rid of uh, one permanent. I like the idea of Deadly Dispute. It's going to draw us a card for sacrificing a. Uh, draw two cards for just sacrificing an artifact or a creature that's going to come in good handy the reason that utter end is kind of tough for me is you have things like generous gift in these colors that do something similar although i'm aware that generous gift destroys and uh utter end exiles but we can we can look into this exile a little more love secure the waste x11 one, one soldiers are white uh, creature warriors at at instant speed this is great for our, at the end of our opponent's turn Dumping a ton of mana into Secure the Waste and untapping. We see the Flawless Ruger. I like the idea of Call the Copper Coats. I just wonder how often it's actually going to net in our benefit. Let's come into Sorceries. Demonic Tutor, exactly what we want to play. Uh, you can say what you want about Tutors, but unfortunately in our format, they're some of the best cards that can be played because if, you have a, if you're going to be running a tool, a, tool do, uh, a toolbox deck like us where we're going to have a lot of different cards for a lot of different situations, they are going to do it really well. Um, I'm going to add Imperial Seal as well just because I own one, uh, but also because uh, we're going to be drawing a lot of cards with Calgar. So even if we put a card on top, it's not going to be very hard to get it into our hand. Collective effort could be an interesting way to get to counter on all of our creatures, just like the uh, if we see the flesh is weak or we need to get counters on all of our creatures. Collective effort is a way technically we could do that, so I, I do like that as an option. Uh, for the Emperor, just gives all of our creatures villains a lifelink. We can do that some other ways. Dam is one of my other favorite board wipes. Four mana, nuke everything. Yeah, again, I, I think I like the other uh, board wipes we chose better. Deploy to the front's interesting. Just seems like it costs way too much mana. I like Dabal Content. It's another uh, tutor, but if we have to sack a creature, 
to do it, which we're going to have plenty. So I kind of like that. Fabricate would go get us any artifact. There are some artifacts in our deck that are pretty important. So I think... Um, I, th I think I think fabricate could be important, but do we just like you know do we play the Grim Tutor instead? I like Supreme Verdict. Supreme Verdict could be another option as far as uh, board wipes go. The fabricate versus Grim Tutor debate could be interesting. I like fabricate. We'll come back on it. I would much rather just play another unconditional tutor like Imperial Seal and get it that way. Okay, let's come down into artifacts. We have the Ice Crown Scepter plus uh, Dramatic Reversal combo. I, I don't really see the benefit of that in this deck. I do still like the Rosette. I think it's going to do a lot of good. Uh, Oketra's Mounting would be a lot better if we were playing a lot more... If we're playing a lot more creatures, flat-out creatures, but we're not, so I don't see it. I like the idea of the gunship, but uh, not, not really. It just seems too expensive. Oblivion, Rings of Bright Earth would give us, would be able to copy Calgar's Moody. Halo Fountain could be an interesting kind of uh, win con in our deck, so that's kind of interesting. Um, Horn of Valhalla is an interesting card for those go-wide decks, but I think we're going to pass by it. Here's where I want to pay a little more attention, because I know there's going to be things in this that I did not think of. The first was Feldar Retreat, which seems kind of interesting getting us a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control uh for lands coming in which is going to pair really well with the flesh is weak so i think that card is almost almost better than collective effort because we can get this over this the sake of multiple turns whereas this is only once so i kind of like that a little more this is also a searchable as well quarter grace gets us a token at the beginning of our upkeep there's cheaper ways to get it than four mana uh, so we need to talk really quick about Smuggler's Share and Monologue Tags. These were both um, these were both cards that Wizards made to kind of be like Smothering Tithe. And I think both of them do a good job in some ways, but both of them also fail in other ways. I know why they're both played in this deck. That's because with Calgar out, they both have the opportunity to draw us cards. I just worry that... I just worry that both of them are going to end up failing more often than they're going to do us good. And if it comes down to needing the slot for something else, I just I feel like they're both not going to beat Rhystic Study or Smothering Tithe for what we need them to do. And so for that reason, I'm not going to include them, although I could understand why someone would. I'm also not going to include Cathar's Crusade, and I know that's probably going to make a lot of people mad because like Cathar's Crusade is like one of the best... Uh, it's one of the best white enchantments when it comes to going wide uh but i'd much rather spend my mana on a bunch of littler enchantments that pump my creatures up than cathar's crusade we're in esper at the end of the day which means we're not guaranteed to have a ton of mana and so uh i think at the end of the day we just kind of gotta go we gotta go that route i will play revel and riches though because the treasures are going to be something we're going to be able to get, especially if we're attacking a bunch and our opponent's creatures are dying, or if opponents, you know, if they're sacrificing their creatures or we're wiping the board or or, or whatever. I think Revel Mercies is good to put in as a little mini win, a uh, little win con. We have, we see Intentable Virtue, we see the Luminarch, we see the Spy Network. Uh, didn't think about Inspiring Leader. Inspiring Leader actually be really good when our enchantments at, or when our commanders out. Each of our creature tokens get plus two, plus two. Being here instead. Control. Venomous is one. This would just give us. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go into the planeswalkers. Uh, I like Kaya Geist Hunter just because it uh, doubles the amount of tokens that could get played. But I think the play, if we're gonna play one, would be something like Liliana Dreadhorde General, which would get us a zombie creature token if we need it. Each player sacrifices two creatures, gets some creatures out of the way, but whenever a creature dies, we draw a card. Okay, so let's go through the next massive batch of cards and get them added in. Um, again, I know not everyone is going to make uh, Marnius Calgar a uh, an enchantment deck, 
but I think the reason that I really like enchantments especially in these colors is because a there's a lot of really great ones and b they're just they're hard for a lot of people to get rid of yes you're gonna run into those games where people have those you know have those uh enchantment board wipes or the artifact board wipes and yes it's gonna suck when it happens but i think more often than not we're going to get away with it then uh, then have to worry about that removal. I think the hardest part about this deck at the way that it's and the way that we're the route that we're going is is just going to be that our turn one through three or four may just be a lot of playing mana rocks and and kind of surviving until we get to our upper end. And that's okay because almost every other, every other you know, deck of this type, any of those other Grixis decks at the table, or um, these kind of strategies, are going to be doing the same thing. We're not going to be alone in the fact that we're going to need those first couple turns to set up, and so um, I'm willing to do that, and then hopefully. Uh, hopefully we can uh, set up and and move our game plan so i think the game plan here as we quickly move towards finishing out our mana base and then making our cuts our game plan is going to be get our tokens engines online whether they're ch cheap and dirty like bitter blossom or luminarch ascension or whether they're a little bit more elaborate with some of our creatures, Alela, or uh, some of our other sources to get tokens, Kalgar will always be a way to get us value if we can have him on the battlefield. If we can't, we want to be able to try to win the game without him because once he becomes nine or eleven mana, it's just gonna it's just gonna get really tough, and we have to be okay with that. I like Reliquary Tower. I like Urza Saga. Field of the Dead seems really good. We're playing almost all lands with different names. I like Frexian Tower, so this is going to almost always turn online. Uh, I am a guy that normally likes to play Ancient Tow Ancient Tomb, but I understand if you're not. In this deck, I think I'm going to pass for the moment. Cami Ruins can put stuff back on top. I kind of like Vault of the Archangel as a way to just make all of our tokens. have a death touch and lifelink which could gain us a ton of life out of nowhere so that seems kind of interesting let's go down the artifacts uh i, I normally play the crypt if i play or as a saga i like to play uh, another one or two one mana artifacts we already have skull clamp which is good as well but uh, I'm the kind of person who likes to play uh, crypt in non green decks if you're not you can just go ahead and sub this out for uh another signet or something like that i think mox opal more than often is going to be turned on in this deck i want to throw it in there uh, we're playing the reliquary tower but i also kind of like the idea of like decanter of endless waters or thought vessel something that's also going to turn off our maximum hand size i think if we're honest we might want both of them because of how many cards we're going to end up drawing. I think I value Endless Water over Thought Vessel just because we get a mana of any color out of it. Then let's go down into the lands. Exotic Orchard more than often is going to tap for uh, any color, which could make it a good land. Uh, I'm going to avoid it this time. I for totally forgot the Commander lands. What a dummy. Uh, sea of Clouds. Uh, Vault of Champions. These are going to come in untapped if we have two or more opponents. So that's going to be almost every game. <laughs> of course, unless we're in the in the late game where all of our opponents have been knocked out. So can't believe I missed those. Those are the more n normally one of the uh, normally a set of lands that I add in every time. So I'm surprised that I missed those. We can't play Path of Ancestry because we're not paying enough creatures to really pay it off. Pardon me. Don't mind the mana confluence. I would consider the Painlands 
uh, especially a dark our wastes and uh caves of coilos since we're going to be right pretty heavy and white i don't really see any not benefit cool so let's do that let's add uh, a dark our wastes let's add uh, caves of coilos let's add the Malakoi Tower. Let's add the Mississauga. Field of the Dead. I like the Frexian Tower just because once a turn we can get two black mana out of sacrificing a creature, and I think we'll have plenty of them around uh, to take advantage of. We'll throw in the Crypt. Again, I think we're going to have to rely on our in our uh, artifacts to get our mana going. We'll add the Mox Opal, and we'll add the Decanter of Endless Water. Okay. I'm going to really quickly rock through here. I don't hate the idea of the Prairie Stream. We're just not, we're not playing any basics at this point, so it doesn't do us as much good. Argument could be made for Arcane Sanctum. Right now we have four searchable lands off of three fetch land targets, so we have plenty of targets there. I think the argument could be made for like a sunken, or like a prairie stream, just so that it helps turn on our, uh, helps turn on our, our lands that come in and check whether we have certain land types. Maybe that's something we consider. All right, 33 lands. I think I'm content with that. I think I am content with our picks so far. All right, we're down to 127, guys. Let's let's start our cuts. This is, like, I, like I've said in previous videos, this is the hardest part of building a deck is cuts. Because you've added all these cards that you really love. You put cards in this deck that you think are going to work well that you think are going to do well for you. And now it's time to start cutting cards down to 100. We're currently at 127. We're at 33 lands, so we know we don't want to cut lands. We know we need to cut other things. So now's the time where we start making decisions on what it is we need to cut. Let's start with our sorceries. We have, we're playing Vanquish the Horde's Supreme Verdict, Martial Coup, and, for, and Farewell as all board wipes. I like Vanquish the Hordes because it's going to come down to probably just white mana more often than not. So I think we're going to cut the Supreme Verdict for now. We're going to put that over our maybe board. We may not need both Preordain and Ponder. So I think I'm going to cut Preordain for the moment. Uh, I think I like Imperial... kind of think we can cut a Dillic Tutor. We're playing enough of these other tutors that we may not end up needing a Dillic Tutor with how many of the other ones we have. All right, let's look at Finale of Glory. X, white, white. Make soldier tokens at sorcery speed. So Entreat the Angels is X, white, white to make angels if, if we draw it that turn. Otherwise, it's double X, triple white. And it's only if we do if it's the first card we drew this turn, so that could be awkward. I actually kind of want to cut Finale of Glory for something like Secure the Waste. It just costs less mana, allows us to get more down. Okay, I like those eight. Liliana, I'm moving back and forth on. I like it because when a creature dies, we draw a card. But I don't know how much we're paying into this Aristocrats theme. So I think I'm going to take it out for now. And then if we really think that we're going to pay off that Aristocrats theme, we're going to move it back in. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I've said Aristocrats a couple times. Aristocrats is a theme where you sacrifice your own permanence for your own gain. So we think that we're going to do a lot um, of that. I think it's cool to bring it back in. All right, moving into the instance, I cut White Sun Zenith just because I think it's going to end up being too much. Vanishing Verse, I think we have better removal. Uh, Mikey, I think, has kind of brought me over to the side of not loving Swords to Plowshares as much. I like it. Uh, I do generally still like it because it's one mana and it's white so i'm going to keep it in this deck it's going to always be easy to cast but i think i always prefer paths exile especially since less and less cards decks these days are playing basic lands on the higher level 
I think faithful absence can go. I actually kind of think faith in <coughs> faithful mending can go as well. I think if we're going to have plenty of card draw. I think drown the lock can go as much as I like drown the lock. I think it more often than not, it's just going to end up not being that good. Again, I love deadly dispute because we're going to kind of always have something necessary. 16 cards to go. Uh, before I go through the enchantments and the artifacts, I want to go through the creatures. Okay. Adeline. When we attack, gives us tokens. We have a lot of ways already to make tokens. Is Adeline going to do enough? Maybe. Alelos for sure. Commissars for sure. Company commanders for sure. Just because of that death touch. Dorothy, I just, I really like for the backside, but maybe it's too slow. Esper Sentinel feels like it needs to be in there. Einhorn just feels really slow. I I don't think it's going to do as much good. I kind of feel the same way about Greyfax. But I like that the other creatures get plus one plus one vigilance, which makes me want to keep it. Mentor's a slam dunk. A deer Kraken's a slam dunk because we can get tokens out of it. Pitiless Plunder is just going to... It's just going to pay off anything else we do, and that's why I like it. I'm going to keep it. Thopter Assembly, I'm going to keep. Works really well with that Time Sieve. And the Honor Guard is four mana for a plus one, plus one. Like, I want to keep it in for the flavor, but a lot of me just wants to cut it. So we're going to cut it for now. Again, we can always come back and add more, but for the moment, I think I like it these 10 creatures better and I'm not even as high on the Adeline I think I'd be willing to cut Adeline as well mm, I'm going to do it even though I really like Adeline we can always bring it back in okay uh, how many cards 12 cards to cut let's go through our artifacts time sieve I really like throne of the god for I really like the golden throne let's well, sack a creature to add 3 mana in any combination of colors again this is great it is only 1 per turn but it protects us from dying. It also really fits the deck thematically, which uh, I know it seems kind of like a moot point at this point. But, uh, I've got so many other cards that originally came in this deck, but I'm going to keep it for now. We're going to keep the three talismans. Soaring, yes. Skull Clamp, yes. Keep the altar. Uh, I'm going to cut the Demir Signet because I think the white man is going to be more important, so we'll keep Orzov and Absorius instead. Nettle Cyst I really like. I think we're going to end up having a lot of artifacts and enchantments, so I think this is going to be really good. Moxable, yes. Crypt, yes. The Roulette. I just really like, because it gives everything menace. I just feel like it's a real good. Dolmen Gate, yes. Decanter, yes. Decanter might be the one that gets cut there uh, over anything else, even though I like the no hand size. Uh, it's just so much more expensive than the rest of them, and maybe that's what gets it cut. All right, enchantments. Anointed procession's a yes. Bastion's a yes. Just because we're playing with so many creatures, if someone board wipes, you know, with a with a board full of our tokens, it could kill our opponents. I really like borrow transference, and I forgot that the bottom half says whenever you cast an artifact spell, you lose a life and create a token. So, uh, I like that. Birth of the Imperium, I'm kind of getting less and less on. Uh, Bitter Blossom, that same thing with Defenders of Humanity. Like I'm getting a little bit lower on them just because they, we have so many other cards that do better things. Uh, Birth of Zonmech going to get us three. Then they're all going to sack creatures. Then we draw two cards. I don't know. I just, I'm not in love with either of them. Defined Visitation, yes. Favorable wins. We're going to have enough flying tokens. Feldar Retreat can give us either tokens of that plus one plus one. Anthem buffs. Hollow Haunting is going to give us some benefits for all these enchantments. Spring Leader, yes. Table Retreat, yes. Lumark and Paladin class. Reconnaissance. Reconnaissance Mission. Revel and Riches. I almost want to say, can we cut Reconnaissance Mission? Do we have enough card draw? I think we do. Sigil of the Empty Throne in a deck that has 24 enchantments just seems too good to cut. 
The tithe seems really good. Flesh is weak seems really good. Thopter spy, meat hook. True conviction almost seems like it may lose its place. And I almost I almost feel like wedding announcement could be too expensive for what we're trying to do. Because now we got to make seven cuts elsewhere. And wedding announcement seems to be the worst of all of these buffs. You could kind of argue that there's a bunch of other of them that are just straight better. You know, Glorious Anthem comes down right away and buffs. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I've sold myself there. Okay, 106. 106, man. This is tough. This is getting really tough. Thank for Stone Wars, Marshall Coup. Farewell. I like All Runs Epiphany. An extra turn. You never quite know. No, come in handy. Right here, I'm just looking through. I'm trying to think, is there anything that I just deem to be not necessary? Uh, let's see what it looks like without decanter. I really like all of those. I'm having a lot of trouble here. We're at 105, and I really like every card in this deck, which is kind of what I figured was going to be the problem. It's just so many good cards. I kind of think we need to cut a tutor, which you could say, arguably, why don't you just cut something else but the tutor? Um, it might even be Imperial Seal. Diabolic Intent puts the hand. Demonic Tutor puts the hand. And again, Seal on like turn one could set us up. I'm kind of rolling through and just trying to think, what are the couple cards that I can cut? Black Market Connection seems like a slam dunk. Because it gives us the treasure, and the treasure pushes us forward. Do you know what I mean? It seems like a it seems like a slam dunk. It seems like everything we want to do. Are we not a hollowed haunting deck? We just we feel like we are. We have so many enchantments. But maybe we're not gonna have enough. Maybe we're not a hollowed haunting deck as much as I want us to be. Maybe we have to accept that. We're not a hollowed haunting deck because we don't have enough. I just think those spirits could just get out of hand if enough of them. Maybe we just, even though at, maybe we had 21 enchantments, we're just not, it's not enough. But then again, it's almost, almost feels like enough. Ah, man. Okay. We got to We got to go with it. We got to, we got to get it down to a hundred, whether we fully like it or not. This is, this is why I always preach that. You need to get the deck down to 100 and test it because you're going to learn so many good things about the deck by testing it to see whether this stuff works. Sigil seems like maybe it should come out too. Is it going to be too expensive? Are we going to want to slam these cards down on the small end to get our value out of the way instead of that. We're still playing Divine Visitation. We're still playing the Annoyed Procession. We're still playing these things to double. But maybe if we cut the Hollowed Hunting, we also gotta cut the Citadel of the Empty Throne. Dr. Spine Network. I like it because it works with Flesh and Weak. It works with Bow Transference. It's kind of a better reconnaissance mission if you think about it because it works more often with what we're trying to do three cards guys three cards whatever removal hits anything just anguish I'm making let's cut the plowshares we're down to 102 I like void run because it hits anything and that's important it's more important than I think we think Hitting any type of permanent can do us a lot of good. And I don't want to discount that. I think that's really important. Oh, man. This is really tough. We're down to 102. 102. Just two cards, guys. Just two cards. We can cut two cards. Let's cut the Pitiless Plunderer. Price is down to 101. At this point, I think I just need to cut something. And say, this is where you would take the deck and make it your own. Work through it. See what you think. Add the cards back in. I, th I think this has to be the point where we just, bam, cut something. 
and say, this is the point that we're going to move on and test. So I think we're going to cut... keep saying that and you're probably like no of course it's it's not that tough you should cut x sure okay just don't don't know what x is um like 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 someone out there's probably like milsey it's clearly x card it's a terrible card it doesn't fit your strategy P probably but the problem is i'm looking at this deck and i don't see one and i'm not gonna be the idiot who cuts a land <laughs> that's just not a good idea you you want to keep your mana base food a certain strategy level Revel and Riches just seems perfect. Have an extra win con in the deck. I just, ah, man, I'm having a really tough time. Um, all right, I'm going to cut. We have a lot of artifacts, especially a lot of mana artifacts. I wonder how often Skull Clamp is going to come through for us. In a deck that's going to make a lot of tokens that end up going to get buffed, but no, oh, so many of our stuff makes one ones. I'm going to cut the talisman and dominance since we're centered in white. So that gets us to 100. Friends, we're at 100. We made it. We made it. We made it down to 100. Um, I like the look of this deck a lot. I'm interested to try this up against a Layla. You know, a Layla's taking the same strategy but moving it a different way I think this one plays a lot like Alayla but it does a lot of things differently and uh, I think more often than not this draw card is just going to zoom us forward but I think I like it guys we made it, Hunter cards Marnius Calgar uh, I tried my best to keep as much of the Imperium cards in as I could but I think the problem is I just ended up liking other cards more than others and that's okay. Um, I think a lot of people are going to want to keep these 40k decks the way they are. A lot of people are going to want to change them. So, friends, I hope you enjoyed uh, my build of Marnie Skalgar. Like I said, there's going to be a deck tech where we're just going to talk about the deck as it sits right now, if that's something you care about. Uh, and uh, please like and subscribe. Tell me in the comments what you'd like me to see. Is there another Esper deck that you want me to play or, or build? Shoot, shoot it down in the comments. Um, do you disagree with any of my card choices? Shoot down in the comments uh, and, and tell me what you think. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.